I'm Andrea. Today I will introduce a Makey 12mm f2.8 ultra wide angle lens. This lens is suitable for APS-C format micro single camera and it has Sony, Panasonic, Fuji, Canon and Nikon series. So now let's take a look at this lens. Now I will choose a lens for Sony camera and try it on Sony A6300. This is a group composed of 10 optical lens, 12 constituted all metal body lens. The aperture range of this lens is f2.8 to f22 and the focal length range is 12 mm. The closest to focusing distance is 10 cm and this lens uses multi-quoted nanometer technology so it has better color performance. It has pretty lens quoting and a rounded aperture in parts of 9th plane aperture which makes a face of more soft focus spot edges, smooth curves and no jack. Through the introduction of this lens, surely we already have the good understanding of the quality of this lens, but the lens is always used to shoot, so let's look at the effect of it in the actual shooting. I am now in Old City Bay and my hands are holding Sony A6300 with Makey 12mm f2.8 lens and I also invited my friend Vicky to come. Her hands are holding Fuji X-T1 with Makey 12mm f2.8 lens and we are going to take some pictures to see how this lens in the actual shooting perform. This lens is compact size and it's very easy to control in the hands, very good lens quoting and glare suppression. This lens is very thick and soft and it focuses precisely. As a 12mm wide angle lens, it has a super wide viewing angle of approximately 99 degrees, so the landscape can all fit in the picture. Through a wide angle lens perspective, you can show broad or tall buildings while the lens of distortion control is very nice, near zero distortion. So you can see the house edges are straight, not bent. Only those who have seen the images covered by the ultra wide angle lens know that it won't be so extensive if it's not 12 mm. Only those who have seen the images covered by the ultra wide angle lens know that it won't be so extensive if it's not 12 mm. While the light at night is dark, you need a flashlight when you shoot at night. Here's the MK320. You can use it to fill in light when you shoot, but that's not enough. You still need a TTL, right this one. It can connect to the MK320 and the Sony's flashlights. 
You can use it to move wherever you want. First, remove the MK320 and then install. And there you go. The color of the night is easy to go wrong, but this lens is multi-coated nano and with the body of Sony originally have excellent color capability, so it can fully restore the picture. Now let's take a look at some samples. Meiki's 12mm lens has excellent distortion control, so you can see the building lines and the edge has no distortion, and this is very commendable for 12mm super wide angle. Although this is a super wide angle lens, he has a closest focusing distance of 0.1 meters. With f2.8 large aperture, it can also shoot beautiful background blur effects. Through this group of samples, we can see that glare control performance of Meiki 12mm lens is acceptable thanks to 9 aperture blades. When shooting night scenes, the light source will show a beautiful ash trail. Because we have Sanyang's 12mm lens, so we also used it to take some samples. And now we are going to have a look at how much differences between $230 Meiki and $400 Sanyang. First of all, we are going to take the distortion test. Through the proofs comparison, we can see that Meiki is better in distortion control, but Sanyang's distortion is absolutely larger. Next, from this group of photos, both lenses have different degrees of dispersion. At the edge of the screen, both of them have purple fingering problems. From the following set of proofs, we find that two lenses have good resolution and the more appropriate sharpness control. Finally, let's see this group of photos. The two lenses have some hidden corner problems and the vignette control of Mickey is better. Through these photos, we have a general understanding of Meiki 12mm 2.8f. It has excellent workmanship, superior resolution, and lens distortion control. But there are certain edge decline in quality problems. But the combination of its $230 price, we think it is a high-cost performance lens. And it is suitable for photography enthusiasts as the first super wide-angle lens. And what do you think? That's all I'm gonna introduce today. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye guys.